all right guys welcome back to the channel as we already know it's director vim once again and today i kind of have a bit of a surprise i mean we got two big boys in the building man so here on my hands here or in my hands here i got the canon 70 200 f4 which is an l lens a professional lens and then i also have I mean the muscle guy here 170 to 500 sigma it goes all the way from f5 to 6 all the way to whichever you want to stop it down to today i'm just gonna do a few comparison here and there i mean i'm not gonna take more about the canon side because i have a video about this already on the channel if you haven't seen it check it out on the channel but i'm going to dial in a bit more into the sigma side because i believe i haven't talked about this lens so far so getting straight to the, the lens specification, this particular unit that I got in my hands is an EF um, lens, which means it's purposely for Canon. You do get the same type, I mean, for other lens, I mean, camera brands as well, like the Nikon, the Sonys and all that. But this particular one that I have uses the EF mount. It does the job if, if you are someone who is purposely into sports or wildlife type of um, photography. And maybe portraits it does the job very cool but there are some downside and limitation which i'm going to list in a couple of seconds so um getting straight to the point is not a great low light beast lens or anything that i mean compared to your 50 mils and your prime lenses this one goes all the way from f5 i know someone will be like you know this is not the best uh, low light skin i understand but there is some cool side of this lens as well if you try to dial in into it what happens is you do not get, I mean, it's not the king of low light, but if you want to achieve some crazy background, I mean, some <laughs> out of, you guys do know, I've taken a few photos with this particular lens, I think some past days ago, and I'm going to display it as you guys can see it right here. It's not the best, um, but what I can say is if you zoom all the way to, I mean, its limit, let's say all the way from 250 until 500, uh, I pretty think you can get some crazy blurriness on the background. It's not a lens that I think you should pick if you, I mean, your main focus is portrait. I think you can have this in your bag if you are actually thinking of doing more of wildlife or sports scene and all those type of, I mean, photography. It's not a bad lens overall. This lens is quite old, okay? It has been in the market for years. I don't, I don't actually know how long. But I believe this is, I mean, more than five years, if I'm not mistaken. So um, I have the Canon um, version for a while now. I've been shooting a couple of, I mean, pictures. I actually didn't have enough love or much love for this lens until I took this guy out for a shoot. And to my surprise, it's crazy. Yeah? That's when I started to realize that sometimes if you have something, you need to love it more. Because if you lose it, you will tend to miss it. I took this guy, I mean, the Sigma out for a shoot. And it was just this and then a 15 mil. I just wanted to try out, I mean, its strength. I wanted to see how it performs and all that. So I took my buddy out, uh, Musman, for a photo shoot on one of the mountains in Pretoria. Today we're just using the 50 millimeter f1.8 and also the Sigma 170 to 500. I'm going to list a couple of photos. Where is this guy going? My voice is gonna go now. You put your voice there. <laughs> I do you know this newbies. Hey, newbies. <laughs> newbies. So yeah, today we're just using the Canon now uh, 50mm f1.8 and also the Sigma 170 to 500. So we're just going to show I mean both sides, but purposely we're going to make a video about the 170 to 500. And then here are some of the images that we took um, at the spot. The images came out right, especially if you are able to nail the focus. I mean, this lens right here, the Sigma, does not have any um, image stabil stabilization. It does not have any um, thing that will stabilize your images, unless if you got built-in in-body stabilizer in your camera. The lens itself does not have one. And I'm surprised. I don't actually know why Sigma did that, because... This lens is extremely heavy. I mean, it's. I think this this happens to be one one of the heaviest lens I've ever bought in my entire life. It's so heavy. It's. Let me not lie. Like it's heavy compared to the. I mean, the Canon version. It's very light. It's quite nice, and you can you can shoot all day with this without feeling. I mean, any pain. But trust me, if you have to take this guy on a shoot. It's gonna cost you an arm <laughs> so there was a recent wedding that i shot in centurion and i was thinking between these two because i didn't want it to go with i mean some heavy kit already my gears are heavy in terms of the lighting and all that 
So I had to let this guy out. I didn't take this bad boy for the wedding shot because of the weight. So I think the weight will be one of the major downside on this lens. If you are someone that you do not uh, have enough muscle or you don't go to the gym, if you are someone who is as tiny as I am, man, I will really suggest you do away with this lens, man. But maybe it's just my personal opinion or thoughts. I'm not sure. Maybe someone might also find it very light. But yeah, compared to the, I mean, the Canon version, the Sigma is extremely heavy. So if you are someone that is willing to pick up this lens, you should bear that in mind. I think that's the major reason why they actually implemented the tripod um, thing here. So that in case you're on a field shooting and you are tired or you feel some pain, you can quickly slide it on your tripod or mount it on your tripod, whichever way. I mean, that's what most wildlife photographers do. So yeah, on the other side, the disadvantage, I mean, the other disadvantage thing I will tap on, it will have to be the, um, I mean, the, the zoom ring, okay? Coming from the Canaan, all right? I, honestly, I thought this lens was very bad until I, I picked this lens. <laughs> so coming from the Canon version, this is a 70 to 200. So what that means is I will be able to zoom all the way from 70 to 200. I know it's not the widest since there is 500 now. So I was thinking, I mean, this was bad until I picked that one. So when I'm on the field shooting and I have to zoom from 70 to maybe 150 or 200, I just zoom. I mean, I just zoom all the way. I just zoom without any hesitation or any additional weight coming in place. Because when you zoom in on this lens, you do not have any extension of the lens. I mean, when you zoom in, it stays like that. So whether you're on 70 or 200, the length of the lens becomes the same. On this guy here, when you zoom in all the way from 170 to 200 or to 500 or whichever, I mean, you want to zoom into, check this out. It just extends all the way and I'm like, whoa, whoa, relax, calm down. <laughs> it's like waking up in the morning. I mean, if you're a man, you know, it goes all the way. I don't know why on earth, like it's so long and this even increases the weight. It gives an additional weight. So it's, it's really a downside on my side, man. And then another thing that I'll tap on, which still got to do with the zooming aspect, when I'm on the field or when I'm shooting and I want to, uh, maybe put some preparation in place, which means my camera needs to be in my hands. Once I have the camera tilt down, it just... <laughs> I mean, what was Sigma even thinking? What were they thinking? Like, what were they thinking? Why would you do a lens like this? Like, there's no locking mechanism. It does not do any... Like, once the lens goes down, it pulls, it pulls out. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds funny, yeah? <laughs> Once the lens goes down, it pulls out. And that that is very much, it, it annoys me a lot. I don't even know how to deal with this. I really wish Sigma implemented some lock switch whereby if you are not using the lens, you will be able to lock it and then it will not extend this, I mean, funny way. Another thing that I'll pinpoint will have to be the autofocus system, okay? Coming from the Canon side, I mean, the autofocus is a bit noisy. This, well, this is the ultrasonic moto. If I'm not mistaken, it's not really loud, but it is okay. You can hear the autofocus when it's, I mean, it's pulling out and in. But this one, your neighbor will hear it. <laughs> your neighbor will hear you. It's not as bad as it seems, but compared to the Canon one, I think that is a major bigger disadvantage. Overall, man, I think um, the Sigma also got some nice aspects or some nice places that I can tap on, which will have to be the zoom because you are able to zoom all the way from 170 until 500 and man 500 that's that's a long distance man that's that's like <laughs> i'll penetrate i'll penetrate through your x-ray i'll even see your lungs <laughs> so yeah in terms of the zooming aspect it really does the job it goes all the way quality wise i will give it a thumbs up because i've shot a couple of pictures and the quality really came out nice when I was going to buy this lens, I went at night, it was a bit, it, I think it was around 4, 5, 6, somewhere there. And when I got there, I had to test it. And it was crazy because it was dark at the spot where I was buying it. But I still managed to, I mean, achieve some great image through that darkness. Not to say it's, I mean, it's, a good, it's, it's good in low light, but it still does the job if you know how to operate, I mean, cameras and lenses in general. So overall, man, I don't have much really, I mean, to tap on. 
it's a lens it does the job but i really think that it's suitable for specific people especially for people who are into um wildlife number one sports yeah um portrait yeah it can maybe try as long as you know how to dial in your camera obviously it's 170 which means the subject needs to be a bit of a distance away from you and trust me it does the job when you zoom in and you are able to kneel the focus and uh, you don't shake that much and you do get some great images let me not lie but i think i'll really prefer my canon than this one uh, what happened is i actually posted this lens on the internet to sell it after going through this lens i just took out the canon i, I just removed it i'm no longer selling my canon unless i get a convincing price then i mean you never know so yeah man <laughs> yeah it is so this is i mean in terms of weight if you can actually lift this every morning like every morning you wake up and then you do this for 10 minutes 10 minutes i think you you'll be bigger than brog lesnar like trust me you you will gain muscle you you'll be buff <laughs> but overall no complaints i think it's a lens it does the job i'll really pick up this lens if i did not have this or i'll really pick up this if i don't have the option for picking up this one so yeah overall it's a lens like i said it does the job if you want to pick this up i hope you do listen to my tips and tricks and disadvantage and i mean all those factors i just gave if you have any questions based on any i mean these two lenses or this particular one list it in the comment section i'll try my possible best to answer everything thank you very much for coming do not forget to subscribe like this video as well and i'll catch you in the next one peace